Welcome back to Have You Heard, the social media podcast by us here at The Social Shepherd, where we tell you everything you need to know about social media if you work in digital. My name is Zoe. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO here. And today I'm joined by Sarah and Izzy. Uh, Introduce yourselves and tell everyone your job titles. Okay, we're the same. (laughs) We're the same. (laughs) I'm Sarah, social media manager. And I'm Izzy, social media manager. Um, So we both work in the organic department at the Social Shepherd. Fabulous. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Is this first podcast? Oh, I didn't know it was your first one. Yeah, my first one. Welcome. Izzy, you've done a few. I've done one. I've done one. Okay. I said I can do the chatty ones. The chatty ones. (laughs) The chatty ones are okay. Okay. Well, we've had a really busy, I mean, we say this every week, but I think the last two weeks have been particularly busy. I don't know what is going on, but everyone's coming to us for new business and pitches and it's it's all happening. So Izzy and I are in the midst of getting ready to submit a really big piece of work, which mm-hmm. would be super exciting mm-hmm. if we win it. Um, Manifest it. Yeah. And Sarah, you've had a really busy time as well. So. Yeah. Pitch season. season. Yeah, it's been pitch season. Um, But we'll get on to more of that later. Let's delve straight into our industry updates. So one thing that's actually really fun or good is creator insights for brands on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So creators can now opt to share insights on their profile directly with advertisers that are interested in it. Um, So you'll be able to see their total followers, which you could see anyway, that's public information, how many accounts that they have reached over the last 30 days and how many accounts have engaged with them over the last 30 days. I mean, that will make our influencer and our content creator team very happy. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I think that's a great update. And I don't really see why creators wouldn't share those Mm. insights. Sneaky. They probably already have to, no? Like, if they want to work with a brand. Yeah, but I guess at the minute you would have to, like, email the agent. I would say it's almost like... I know from a recent one we've worked on that it's like, well, we're still waiting, we're still waiting for them to reply. Whereas if they can just share it straight away, it just helps everything move along so much quicker. It does put pressure on creators though. Like if they have a bad month of content because it's only showing the last 30 days, they're almost going to have to, like maybe some of them will hide it and say, well, I don't want to show you the last 30 days Mm. because that's not fully representative of Mm, it. And like when algorithm changes happen and everyone sees engagement or reach down across the board, what does that mean there? Mm. So... I think it's a good um, one, but I think it's probably fair to say that you shouldn't necessarily judge a creator Mm. just from the last 30 days. But at the end of the day, if you're a brand and you're paying for an influencer, Mm. you kind of do want that reassurance that it's going to perform. So Mm. you'd probably like to think that their insights don't change too much month on month. So. But yeah, if they've got a strong enough community, they shouldn't actually. You're right. Mm. All right. Funsies. Um, We've got another app. Well, TikTok has launched a new app to try and compete with Instagram. So interestingly, they have launched this app. They have not commented on it. Um, And it's only available on Android Mm. and in selected countries at the minute. Mm. So we haven't actually been able to do too much with it. It's all very sort of hearsay at the minute. I actually have a call with TikTok tomorrow, so I'm going to ask them about it. Um, But yeah, how do we feel about the potential (sighs) of a new app? Guys, not another one. Not another one. <laughs> a new app. I can, can keep up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I because it's for family and friends, right? That is, yeah. I just, I don't. At the moment, I'm not seeing the vision. I just don't understand why they wouldn't just integrate it. the features yeah, straight into the TikTok in there, app. Yeah, I'd maybe get them on board, but I just think there's so many out there. Personally so many apps for me to check in on that was like another one just my family and friends I don't I'm not quite sold on it yet yeah and I think is it maybe because obviously TikTok has tried with TikTok stories and mm. stuff like that and they're not really widely adopted like people mm. are so wedded to Instagram being a space for like their nearest and dearest and being able to like portray mm. what, how they want to portray is it because that hasn't really taken off that no one's really on TikTok stories have you Maybe. guys ever posted to your TikTok story? No. No, I haven't. I feel like a lot of people do post photos anyway as a photo carousel yeah. on TikTok though. So interesting they've now released a photo specific. But I guess you don't really post like, you know, like you would do a photo dump. Yeah. On, you wouldn't do like a non-narrative led photo dump on mm, TikTok. Like it would always be true, like yeah. things that made me happy this month. I love I love doing a photo you, dump. You do good. Yeah. Yours do well as well. Um, 
um, <laughs> or like like it, there's always like some sort yeah. of purpose behind it whereas on Instagram you literally can just be like Instagram's made more I guess what? I guess I think TikTok those are still quite aesthetic driven but I think Instagram you can just put up the nice pretty pictures yeah. you know for me I like always think about what do I want to see on my Instagram whenever I'm like 60 mm. and I'm looking back <laughs> do you think I will still be on Instagram yeah I, I know I actually think we will be. I think we will <laughs> selfies out for brunch yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get my mum she's got an Instagram account I'm trying to get her to actually post I'm like Kimmy you've got so much to show oh my mum loves posting on Instagram <laughs> Does she? Yeah. My mum has an Instagram account and she is just like, um, it's really embarrassing. I think I've shown it to you. It's just like pictures of me. <laughs> but like, remember, was there one that, um, where she dropped you off at the yeah. airport? Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, this was a couple of years ago and I'd gone home for the weekend and I had gone out with some friends the night before and I had an early flight. And she drove me to the airport. I look awful. Like, I don't even think I've washed my face properly. I was really young at the time. And she was like, you know, when your mum, she's like, oh, smile. Like, and they take like a picture of you and I'm like, <laughs> it's on her Instagram and it's like dropping our darling Zoe off to the airport <laughs> after lovely family time at home. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, we should we should maybe encourage our, the mums maybe to get on social. Maybe our mums will adopt the, the new app. TikTok. Oh, mums on we. <laughs> it is for friends. So how actually do you pronounce it? We. 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 we, we I think. We. we. Mm. Mm, interesting name. I'm not. Interesting I'm not. name. Interesting. I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sold. Do my favourite. TikTok tomorrow. My favourite thing is that my mum always calls TikTok TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> All right. Well, look. I guess the social media managers will be upset with this. Yes. And I'm not too sure if it's going to take off. To be entirely honest, I think they'd be better just to invest more in building out the app a bit yeah. better. We'll wait and see. We will. We will. Um, another one on TikTok is virtual characters for businesses. So they've basically released. Oh, there's some elephants in the office. Um, <laughs> Symphony avatars, which are AI avatars, basically, which means that businesses can have real AI people in their content. They're really creepy. On the, the link that's on there, I generally, I was like, is that a real one? They look so realistic. They actually do, don't they? Yeah. Oh, it's I don't spooky. know if I like it. Yeah, I don't think I like it. Mm. It's just, it's like AI influencers, isn't yeah. it, realistically? I mean, I guess maybe there is, oh, I would say like if there was brands who maybe like their team members aren't comfortable being on camera, but I just think it's so different to have. Do you think we'll I be just... able to spot from a mile off, oh, that's an AI and that's a real person? I don't know because I didn't, even on that yeah. article, I was like, I didn't know at first, but maybe like after a while of seeing a few of them go out, we might be able to start noticing. I can tell that this is AI. I think because I did like a, I did a quick glance on your computer screen when I looked at it. So I'm. I think they look so realistic. I think if I was just scrolling through, they look realistic, but they don't have like the range of expression. Yeah, yeah. Have. This woman looks it's miserable like a bit, yeah. talking about how excited Blank she face. is. <laughs> Sorry, TikTok. <laughs> you're <laughs> <somebody> <laughs> <out of> top <laughs> sort of. They need a wider range of emotions. <laughs> and also, like, how many versions of them have they they got of these? Well, Can I guess just... the way it's going to go is that in theory, brands will be able to sit down and go this is what our dream influencer or influencers look like and, and they'll just... just code them into avatars yeah so we'll just have these yeah. like perfect avatar people then what, what does that mean for the impact of influencers mm. do you mean where like a, like initially like a massive part of what we do is if we want to get a message out to brands and there needs mm. to be people in it the talent selection is a massive part of mm. that whether you're using influencer or a creator or a member of the audience does that just completely dissolve that i just i think for the for what influencers and creators do it's their personality and it's who yeah, they are which and it's their just, ability to be like funny yeah. yeah i think if you're working the, with an influencer it's because you want their audience to see what you're doing so i don't know true. if it'll be the same for ai maybe for content creators it'll yeah. be not as good but for influencers i think might be okay yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Do you think we'll get to a point where we have AI influencers who 
actually harness a following like so say like there's like a <laughs> no but there's so many people who have really good personalities like comedians and like are super funny but they might not feel confident influencing yeah. as such they might hide behind the camera yeah of an ai influencer maybe i just say as a viewer i just uh, that connection i don't think is mm. there for me it depends I would, what they I can know. do Yes, true. Do you know, um, is it, have I shown you both Puff Puff? The penguin? Yes. <laughs> so that's an AI <laughs> penguin. Um, and it, Puff Puff could make me buy anything. I love Puff Puff. He is very cute. Do you want me to? Yeah, what? Okay, hang on. Guys, I've missed we'll that get, one. We'll get Puff How Puff do you know about penguin? Um, I play it sometimes for people in the yeah, office. Yeah, you've shown it to me. Hang on. Have my... Where did you find it? I'm going to have to override <laughs> my TikTok limit for the day. Um... Right, two sex. I sent it to Amber the other day. Uh, Is he a cute, cute penguin? So cute. He sings really cute songs. Um, right, ready? I know that you work hard. I know you're kind and smart. I know you try your best, but now you need to rest. <laughs> oh, he's actually really cute. Do you play that every night before you go to bed? <laughs> I love it. You let him pop, 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 pop. could sell me anything. So I don't know. Maybe there is some future in terms of like, and there's clearly someone behind Puff Puff. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe yeah. Because, but because he's cute. Where is that creepy lady? Mm. If they're cute, maybe. Can we put a picture of the creepy lady? Not in the, creep, this, yeah, in not this the creepy podcast. lady. Um, okay. Well, interesting. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think... I think AI is really going to shake up actually mm. the influencer space as we become more comfortable with it as consumers. Um, like Wally, -E, the film. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> like every time I think of like AI and like the future and like it just takes me to Wally. -E. Yeah. Not that there were AI influencers in there, <laughs> but Wally -E could be an influencer. <laughs> Robots. <laughs> um nice okay and then youtube has a version of community notes that it's testing this is actually a new update for me so uh youtube have said starting today we are testing an experimental feature to allow people to add notes to provide relevant timely and easy to understand context on videos for example this could include notes that clarify when a song is meant to be a parody point out when a new version of a product is being reviewed reviewed is available or let viewers know when older footage is mistakenly being portrayed as a current event so can you add the notes at specific points in the video yeah i don't yeah i think you can it's quite helpful yeah. actually like if you're using a different type of clip I will apologize, sorry, quickly to anyone that can hear clapping that's listening to this. We have a workshop going <laughs> downstairs. Say, going <laughs> they're, do, they're doing um, paid media karaoke. Oh. So it's like presentation training. Oh, it's really cute. Um, so if you hear clapping, it's just a treat. Good vibes. Yeah, it's just good vibes <laughs> in the office. Um, but this update, I quite like that actually. Yeah. I love the timestamps on YouTube. Yeah, me I use too. them all the time. Yeah, I think they're really helpful for people. But with notes, I guess it depends what people are going to use them for. Have you always, do you know on um, like vloggers or like YouTubers when they might be editing something, like Olivia Neal does it all the time where she'll be like, I'm editing this and I just realized mm. I sound insufferable right now type mm. thing. Maybe they'll just use the notes for that. Mm. Yeah. I think in the examples, it was saying that they might be used for if you're using like AI to yeah. outline like a clip, like oh, this clip okay. is AI. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good point, yeah, actually, I guess. With TikTok, will there have to be a label on the symphony avatars to say that mm. this is an AI generated person? I, I thought I'd have to. Yeah, I thought you would have so. to disclaim yeah. it, yeah. And they're doing that as well with some other stuff that they have on the platform yeah, anyway. Like so they're being quite yeah. good at disclosing AI at the minute. Yeah. yeah. Where's they can trick people? Yes. Um, cool. And then final one that we have is TikTok commercial music library integration for Adobe Express. Mm -hmm. um, we, oh, music on TikTok is a dangerous topic to get onto, <laughs> to be entirely honest. Um, I think that's good that Adobe and TikTok have teamed yeah. up. That makes 
editor's life I was gonna easier. Say, editors be happy. But there are already really plugins happy. that you can get to do this. Yeah. So I don't know, would that would that speed up there any? Well, how often do you use the commercial library? Yeah. Mm. There's your issue. Mm. Yeah, true. <laughs> Maybe helpful Original from sand. a paid media perspective for ads that need mm. to utilize the commercial library. Mm. Um, I think with everything going on with music on TikTok at the minute, we're probably going to see quite a lot of shifts. Mm. It's been quite lenient thus far, but then Marriott got hit with that massive lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, it's it kind so of careful. read more like they were using it for paid, which is obviously like a, just an absolute no-go. Like, mm. please don't use copyrighted stuff or snippets from copyrighted music on risk. paid. It's not. Organic is a grey area. And every time we <laughs> ask TikTok about it at an event, like we'll be at their agency workshops and like someone will put their hand up and yeah. say like, what about this? And they're just like, I'm moving on. <laughs> like they'd never want to yeah. talk about it. Um, but yeah, I'm sure the creative team will like that in some shape or form. Mm, lovely um right mr beast are we mr beast fans in here not particularly i have never been a mr beast girl <laughs> no <laughs> i've maybe watched a few videos yeah. but not really a fan okay fair he's gonna make he um 700 million in revenue this year how is that public knowledge actually don't know like, how are people working that out how does He's noted that brands pay him 2.5 to 3 million for a shot in a video. So it'll be because of like brand partnerships, any YouTube revenue that he has going on. Like he'll be paid bank for that kind of stuff. He does a couple of million in ad revenue and a couple of million in brand deals. He told Time that to Time magazine that it doesn't go into his bank account. He's 25. Yeah. I It was said 26. Six on Oh, happy Google. birthday, Mr. Beast. Well, yeah. um, <laughs> His birthday is on 7th of May, if anyone was interested. <laughs> I mean, it's very it's admirable. Crazy. And he's, he's clearly he's done doing really great thing. things. He's, he's doing, doing something thing. right. Mm-hmm. He's doing something right. Um, cool. And then YouTube is beating Netflix in the fight to be a must-have for consumers. So this is really interesting, actually. So um, basically, they asked people what would be a must-have sort of source of media for you, mm. invaluable, and what would be a nice to have. Spotify was actually the highest. Um, it was 73% in May 2023 and 75% in May 2024. That really shocked me. Like people, yeah, that music is such me. a... Mm. Music, podcasts. Yeah, exactly. Um, then there was an app called Reading in 2023 that was under Spotify, but now YouTube Premiums under Spotify directly under May and Netflix isn't even in the top five. Mm. So YouTube premium, it goes Spotify, YouTube premium, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube TV and YouTube music um, for 2024. And oh. last year it was Spotify reading PlayStation plus YouTube and Netflix. So a much more varied mm. um, group in there. But what's your guys' relationship to YouTube versus Netflix? I am a YouTube girly. Yeah. I pay for I YouTube am. premium and I feel like not that many people do. do but you? I just love uh, watching a YouTube video. I feel like I put it on when I'm getting ready. I prefer that in the background mm. rather than like a Netflix show. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm my attention span, as you as you both know, mm. is not is not high. So mm. even like what if anyone's like, Oh, have you watched a series? I'm like, no. Yeah. I can't stand the thought of having to sit there for like an even an hour and watch something. Really? I just can't, I can't do it. I'm a or binge I can watcher. do it if I if I'm like on my phone as well. I can't just <laughs> multiple sit screens. And, whereas YouTube, I love it because if it's like a or even if yeah, if it's a longer YouTube video, yeah. then that's background. But like a good fifteen minutes, I can sit and watch that, and that's all good. That's enough for me. What's your guilty? What's your favorite YouTube channel? Mm. Comfort YouTube channel. Sorry. I love a Sophia and Chintzia, but I also just love old school Zoella. Okay, do nice. You? What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. I like that she has like a long, like 50 minute video yeah. and I can just put that on in the background. Put on the background. What, like from years ago? No, her new recent ones. ones. I, didn't, okay. I, didn't, I didn't know she was still doing She's one. still going. With the kids? Yeah. Wow, well, slay. Um, who's my. I've been watching a lot of Madeline the RG. Yeah. yeah. But she's quite chaotic. <laughs> So sometimes I put that on the background whilst I'm trying to work on that. Like, oh, this is too much going on. Mm. Um, do you know how I, I actually like Jamie Lang's new one? What's it called? Um, let me get it up. 
I oh, mean, he's got a few. Is that the one that he interviewed the podcast with, and he did Louise Thompson on one yes. of them? Um, yeah. Great company. He's actually really good I, Yeah, I really yeah. like, but you know, I'm a Made in Chelsea fan. So I, I think know. almost like his voice, that's like kind of my comfort, almost like comfort TV. Um, yeah, to be honest, I just, I think especially when I'm working from home, I always have YouTube up in the, in the background. Yeah, I listen to classical I like the background music noise. when I work. <laughs> We know you put it on. We know. Yeah, we know. Like torture the office with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I always like to have something on the background, but I am more, I would choose YouTube over Netflix. Fair. Um, yeah. I think there's certain things I'm like wedded to on Netflix now, to be entirely honest. Like, I love Bridgerton. <gasps> Me too. I finished, I, it watched it. I finished it yesterday. I was watching that like, I know. I loved it. It's so good, though. Yeah, it made me cry. <laughs> yeah, really I sobbed watching that, actually. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's interesting. Um, I actually have a question. So, you both are Gen Z, right? I'm on the cusp. You're on the cusp. But yeah. Yeah. So, am I on the cusp? How old are you? you 1997. It's like 98. the first year of Gen Z. Yeah. Okay. 98. So, do you guys relate? Because Gen Z goes all the way down to like, your 18 year olds are Gen Z still. Mm. Do you relate to some of the like stereotypes or do you get frustrated about some of the stereotypes that people have about the Gen Z that they don't work hard enough, that they've got bad attitudes to work? Does that annoy you in any shape or form? Mm. Or are you just like, I don't care about your opinion? I think in some way it depends how literal they're taking that statement. Because mm -hmm. I think like, Loads of people like work hard, but yeah, I don't really. Oh, yeah, I don't think I really care. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> you don't care about your thoughts. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it's, I find it frustrating when it is. I think on LinkedIn, when I've seen a number of posts say like Gen Z, they mm. don't want to go to the office, blah, blah, blah. But do you th just, even think that's true? So like where you've got this very stereotypical just, view yeah. of Gen Z where like they don't want to go into the office. They only want to work remotely. They'll log in at five o'clock. Yeah. They'll leave it. They'll log in at nine o'clock. They'll leave at five mm. o'clock. They don't care if they get fired. They'll just yeah. go traveling or fine. Like, like, do you relate to that? Do you think that's a true representation? No, I don't, no, think, I don't so. think it is. And I think that's maybe why I don't care because I'm like, oh, shut up. Like mm. you're grouping a load mm. of people into this one thing just so you can do your LinkedIn post and moan about people. And do you spot, um, do you ever spot people like tendencies like that in like your friends or anything like that? Or are you just like, I just think. I def I don't know. I think I definitely, I don't know if it's like a pan pandemic thing that I think there has definitely from, I mean, like when I first did my apprenticeship and like first started working here, I think it is very different to like post pandemic where it's like the working from home thing. That, I get, but I don't think that's a Gen Z thing. No, I think the majority like of that's... people now like wouldn't take a job if it yeah. was like five days in the office. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's fair. Yeah, I don't think that's like just a Gen because that's one that I see most. Like they don't want to go in the office. Mm. Ah. Yeah, now that people have had the experience, like, I don't of... think that is just yeah a Gen Z thing. Yeah, working from home. Um, would you want to work fully remote? And you can answer that honestly. Like, would you want to work fully remote, or would you want an I office would, space? I think I'm quite a sociable person I like to like meet people in the office I feel like I don't think I could do fully I could if it was once or twice a week I mm -hmm. think is kind of like a nice mm -hmm. but then I think our minds very like it depends what I'm working on yeah if it's stuff that I know that I just need to get on with then I probably could but if it's like very much team so like today muscle, where we're yeah, working on a pitch it's like I would hate I hate being working and no you just feel like you're not in the loop yeah, yeah. whereas like today we're all sat together Thank you so much for joining today. Um, and thank you to everyone that has watched, listened. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe and we'll be back again next week. Thanks.